Hello, and welcome to the Intuitive Heart Healing Podcast. On today's podcast, we have a special guest, Ursula Duffy, professional astrologer, and um, I know I'm going to certify aromatherapist, right? You got it. That's the part I always get all tongue-tied over. And um, she's here not only to give a little insight on maybe astrology, if she feels called to or whatever, but to talk about her healing journey. So I'm really excited to it and bring more people to you all this, uh, this cycle and uh, listen to other people's healing journeys so that you can gain some more insight along the way. So welcome. Thanks for coming back. Thank you, Val. I'm always excited to come on. Yeah, I'm always excited when we talk and, and I know sometimes we can get lost and talk for hours. So <laughs> we'll be mindful, <laughs> be mindful of how long we talk. Yeah. <laughs> so why don't you just give a little intro about yourself? So everybody knows a little about, about you, because I know getting into astrology was a big part of your healing journey as well. Yeah, it certainly was. And So um, when you did the first, I guess, episode in this series, I remember reaching out to you and saying, wow, what a great addition to to your content and to the podcast. So I'm very honored to be on in this position at this point. So I, I was thinking about this earlier and I kind of feel like I guess maybe some people can relate, maybe some people can't, but my entire life has been a healing journey. And (laughs) I know that uh, you share that perspective as well. And it relates very much to my own chart. And when I discovered astrology, or I guess rediscovered astrology, that was like the whammy, a part of my own healing journey and what I call my spiritual reawakening experience. So I guess I could say that even though the whole thing up to this point has kind of been a healing journey, the, I guess it started really coming online for, I think first during my Saturn return. So my first Saturn return, we all go through Saturn returns around age 27 is when it starts to kind of brew. And that whole experience, I pretty much summarized into a very simple metaphor as I had a very rough draft of my life put together and Saturn came around and threw that into the shredder. <laughs> so from age 27, it's sort of where it really got intense. And I just want to preface this because that will keep it kind of, you know, brief for the sake of limiting the discussion to about an hour. But I do go into very specific, elaborate detail on all of this in my own podcast, Becoming Chiron. So if anyone wants more details about anything that I talk about, the entire first season is pretty much my sharing in every episode, a different topic of every aspect of my healing journey up to this point. Yeah. And I do have a Saturn return episode. (laughs) Definitely go check it out. I look forward to your podcast every time it comes out and you usually follow the moon cycle. So you do the little energy forecast beforehand and, and it's always great insight. Uh, not only to that, but learning more about you and your chart or other people in the chart. Yeah, I really like my whole intention is to bring the live experience of astrology into a more awareness because like it, when I learned my chart with the first reading I ever had, just the validation and the sense of self-awareness that it brought to my life is just something that it wasn't perfect divine timing. I wish I'd had known what what was happening during my Saturn return at that time, because that would have been way helpful, (laughs) but all in perfect divine timing, of course. So yeah, just knowing that blueprint that my soul came in with was just so important to where I am today. Yeah. And just noticing the synchronicities and when you have the accurate time, just the synchronicities are uncanny with specific planetary transits. When you look back on your life, it's just the pieces that got put together for me in those moments were just remarkable. Yeah, I I can, I agree with you because when you read my chart the first time, I was like, oh, this makes sense. Oh, (laughs) oh yeah, that makes sense. Like it just brought in the clarity and understanding and understanding more about myself. Um. And then understanding different things along the journey. And it's, it's 
it's an amazing tool to help you navigate your own life. So, um, do you, uh, let's talk a little bit about what your, what was kind of like, what was that big shift for you to like jump into this? Cause you called it what your spiritual awakening around age 27. Like what were you kind of going through that just kind of like made this big shift? Yeah. So the first part of that journey started with my mom's breast cancer diagnosis in 2006. I was born in 1980, so we can follow along pretty easily with age (laughs) when I talk about years. So 26 is when that happened in October, pretty much like three weeks after my birthday, she got diagnosed. So there was that whole part of it that started. And I was in a relationship at that time. I was living with my, he was my fiance at that point. And I was just giving way more to the relationship than I was getting back. There there was no reciprocity. There was always stress. I was the breadwinner. I did everything. It was just a very challenging experience. And I think that I stayed in it for the, not for the highest vibration reasons, I guess, way too, way too long. Cause I just, you know, I still had feelings for the person and I knew that it was in my best interest not to be in that relationship anymore, but making that move was challenging so there was that kind of brewing at the same time with the with my my mom's diagnosis kind of put a lot of things into perspective that helped me make the decision to get out of that relationship so there was my mom there was the relationship there was I had some job I got laid off in 2008 from the job that I had had like my first like professional job in, in an engineering company so that happened as well. <laughs> so it's just like one thing after another just tanked. My grandmom died during that time, my maternal grandmother. So there was that whole lineage of my mother's side that got put into, you know, really interesting perspective as well. Just like everything that could have possibly been shaken up in some way got shaken up. So that was instrumental in shifting perspective kind of getting out of uh, t- people-pleasing tendencies, I guess you could say, learning how to put myself first, really learning who the important people in my life were. I moved back in with my parents after I left my ex-fiance, so I went back home, and mm-hmm. my mom was kind of, you know, still healing during that time, so there was all that, just getting back into my childhood home and all of that. I got, you know, my financial situation was not good because of everything I was doing. So I had a chance to repair that to an extent while I got to move back and thankfully not have to pay rent and, you know, save money. And there was a financial part of it that came into play. My health came into play. I uh, went through a big weight loss during that time intentionally. Like I exercised a lot. I put, um, I started paying a lot more attention even before that experience to what's in our food and what I ate and that kind of stuff as well. So it was just like a multi-layered shakeup of everything. When you had this like big shakeup of everything, what did you, what did you turn to, to help you through this? My friends and my family. On the other side of the job loss, I did I had one kind of transitory position that was a little bit over a year, but a very stable position came out of that. Everything that came out of it on the other side was something that that whole experience really prepared me for to shift into that was more stable. Like I met my current husband during that time after the breakup and everything. We got together after that. I um, you know, moved again like I said, changed jobs. So <laughs> the shake up happened and then I like shook all the water off and then everything kind of fell into place. So that sort of gave me a stable environment for what came next, which was, like I said, what I call my spiritual reawakening. And that was in 2015. And that was a work situation that just was so stressful. I started taking all that home and it just wasn't good. And I found a podcast that was recommended to me to help me get through that whole time period, which was called Psychic Teachers. So I started listening to that 
and putting all their teachings into practice, started meditating and learning how to work with my chakras. And then everything sort of, I guess, restarted from there. So I guess on the other side of it, the spiritual reawakening is really, I guess, was the next phase that brought me back to myself, really. Yeah. And when you were going through like the spiritual reawakening and doing these meditations and working with your chakras, um, you're also learning about yourself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you have to get into that quiet, still place <laughs> in order to even, you know, get into those spaces. And for me, a big part of that whole thing was coming out of my spiritual closet. Mm-hmm. Because all of that, you know, the psychic parts of myself, the dreams that I had ever since I was a kid, just being in tune with the unseen realms. I was terrified as a kid all the time going to bed because I could feel, I could feel things but not see them. So just knowing that that was all like, okay, and just having a Catholic upbringing. I know you've talked about this, that on the show as well. Uh, Just knowing that our intuition and our spiritual sides and all of that is just something that's naturally part of our souls and our spiritual paths and learning to be okay with that parts, those parts of myself for one, and then to talking, starting to talk about them, a fine community around it. I took a intuitive development class, which is sort of how I started finding my spiritual tribe at that point. A year later in 2016 was when I took that class and Ever since then, it's just been this deep dive into all of the, I guess, esoteric realms and intuition and mediumship and energy healing and crystals and just all of the things. And these are all the things that I was drawn to as a kid anyway. So it's just sort of like, okay, that remembering was there and the feeling was still there and everything just felt right. Let's talk about that for a little bit because, Mm -hmm. you know, we... We talk about these spiritual awakens things that we have, but then when you are able to take a step back and reflect and, and you talk a lot about that with astrology, like go back and look at what was happening during this time, because this, this is, was in your chart and it's that reflection. It's to go back and just kind of see and allow you to see how far you come and see if there's something else there for you to learn, not for you to kind of go back and like get stuck in all that and go back to that energy, but to learn from it. When you look back now and you say, oh, I was into all that stuff as a kid, like you were into crystals when you were a kid and looking for them, like what what were you like exploring? Have you ever looked at it and say, oh, I, I did that when I was a kid. Like, what was the curiosity and what were you exploring? My dad had a rock collection. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. But it was like, it was one of those sets that kind of came in a box and it just had like a little piece of whatever rock it is and just the name of it. And I can't remember if there was a description on it or not, but I just remember always being drawn to that. And I drew a lot when I was a kid, I was always drawing. So that creativity flow was there and just, you know, running with my imagination. I used to write poetry So there were just so many things that just got shut down by life, you know, like we get just so conditioned with school and college and the societal goals and all the things that you think you should be doing. And I just feel like that gets shut down so much and getting to reconnect with those parts of myself were, it was a beautiful journey and the remembering that came along with it and then getting to where I am today well I guess we'll talk more about that part but you know leaving the corporate world and all the things just the culmination of it all is is a very interesting thing to reflect on yeah definitely what did you used to draw horses I was very into drawing just I made a lot of our decorations my mom would put our artwork up around the house so like witches were really one of my favorites (laughs) I made this like 
I don't know, I guess it was eight feet out of like 10 pieces of paper, this like life-size witch drawing that was part of our Halloween decorations for like my entire childhood. That's cool. Just, isn't that funny? That is so funny. <laughs> just like suns, landscapes, palm trees. I can remember loving to draw palm trees, um, the sun, all kinds of stuff. So I haven't really tapped back into that just yet, but I have a sketch pad that needs it to be opened. <laughs> a lot to do with nature and stuff. Yeah. 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 I used to, I used to draw a lot with buildings because I was really into architecture with my dad and I loved like doing like perspective drawings and things like that. But uh, also cartoons. I loved to draw cartoons when mm. I was a kid, especially That's Garfield cool. because I was a huge Garfield fan. But um, he, like I was always like, I called it doodling, always drawing something. Um, if you looked in like my school notes in the margins, you would find like all these things. And now I look at my artwork today. I'm like, yeah, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> you it's know, so it, it's changed and evolved, but like, it's like, wow, I was really tapping into those energies back then and had no idea. It's probably what I did to help me through school. Cause like, we don't, you said, you know, we did all these things and school bogs us down and all those things, but like, we're not talked about energies and stuff when we're a kid and so when we go to school we're just like wide open picking up on everything and it's overwhelming mm -hmm. yeah. it's overwhelming as an adult if you don't know how to like work with the energy yeah and imagine yeah. as a kid and especially when you're young you're like wide open totally wide open yeah but that's interesting witches and nature Mm -hmm. awesome. that's so cool yeah <laughs> trees I used to love drawing trees yeah I wonder if your spirit animal is a horse it could be I was very connected that was something that came from my grandfather you he used to read black beauty to me when I was a kid oh my god I was given a I still have it uh, the book black beauty from my by my godmother oh and uh <laughs> it's like one thing I cannot part with I wouldn't part with that ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you got into astrology during your weekend. When did the aromatherapy come in? So the aromatherapy actually came first. Okay. Yeah. The aromatherapy part was part of that 2015, 2016 spiritual reawakening part. And I was self-studying. I went to what's called uh, Aroma Head Institute. Mm-hmm. It's an online aromatherapy school, which was perfect for me because I was working full time and trying to develop my intuition and all the things outside of that. So I was listening to the podcast while I was at work and then, you know, doing the meditations and stuff when I got home, taking the class at, on evenings and on weekends and that kind of thing. And then the whole aromatherapy thing was a self-paced, self-study school. So that was perfect. That was the perfect fit for me. And how did that, how did that add to your healing journey and how did it help you in your healing journey? I've always been drawn to natural ways of healing. Mm -hmm. So whenever I had, I talk about this on the podcast too, whenever I had any kind of physical condition, it was, it had a weird aspect to it. I guess you could say like when I got the chick pox, chicken pox when I was four, they were so bad that I was hospitalized. I had them on like the inside of my body and on Ooh. the bottoms of my feet and stuff. Like I, it, the whole thing caused a seizure. It was a whole thing. So, and this also relates back to my chart as well, but every single thing that I've developed, Western medicine could only take me so far. Or I would go to a doctor and I would be told there was nothing wrong with me. And I'm like, well, there's something that's, there's something wrong. <laughs> so it, it was a whole, I got interested in essential oils and kind of started down a path of, with, I'm not going to mention any names, but companies that are more focused on sales mm. than on honoring what an essential oil is, which is actually like a plant spirit. So I think I had to have that kind of part of the journey first as well. And then Aroma Head just kind of was brought to me by a, a suggestion from my sister. And I attended the first class or like a free class that she did, the teacher, um, Andrea Bouget. 
and it was on lavender and I'd always been drawn to lavender. So I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. This fits. This is interesting. And she talked about how there were two types of lavender, which I had never known. One that actually can help with sleep and one that wakes you up. <laughs> so knowing the difference between the two is really important. So that was just like, wow, this is so cool. And then I, they had integrity and I did research on the school and felt very comfortable with her as the teacher. So it gave me... I guess one of the natural healing modalities that I was always drawn to using plant medicines instead of pharmaceuticals, because a lot of that never worked for me in the first place. And I was always just sort of like, okay, well, what now? Like, I just have to figure this out for myself. Yeah. And plant medicine is amazing. And, you know, I, I think when a lot of times when people mention plant medicine, they go to like all these big names that like, ayahuasca and DMT and all that stuff that like people know that gives you psychic delics. But when we talk about plant medicine, we're talking about all plants and what they bring to us to help us heal. And they all have a spirit in it, which I love what you said, like all the plants have a spirit in it. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, they're all energy and they all have something they bring. It's really interesting. I, I had bought a book about um, Native American medicine mm, because I wanted to learn. Attuned. They were so attuned. I mean, we, when you think about it, like when Europeans came over, they got so sick because they didn't, the Native Americans actually helped them until they figured out how to manipulate it and turn it the other way. But like they, they, if they just continued to listen to them and listen to the land, we'd be totally different than we are today. Yeah. But like everything has a spirit in it. Yeah. That's what an essential oil is. It's the plant's essence. Yeah. And with aromatherapy, we're tapping into the aromatic plants, the spirits of the aromatic plants. Yeah. That's one area I just don't see, like I love, but like, the, uh, I'm so sensitive to it, like the smells and everything that it's always kind of been like at a distance, but I, I think it's absolutely amazing. And I believe in it, mm -hmm. believe in the power of that it has. So I do it in small doses as much as I can like handle certain things. Mm -hmm. Lavender yeah, is one I more. can't, lavender is one I cannot touch. Interesting. Yeah, it, it sometimes uh, I find that when somebody has an aversion, it's one of the plants that they can learn the most from. Yeah, it it, it causes a reaction to me, mm. a physical reaction, like rashes and, and things like that. Interesting. So I yeah. And it's everywhere and like it smells really good. And there there's this play. Actually, as we're talking about it, I kind of remember my first interaction with rose quartz, and I feel like it's the same thing. Yeah. 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 And it's so mainstream now that a lot of the people don't understand that less is more. Yeah. Doesn't, you don't need a lot of oil. They're so, they're so concentrated. There's so much plant material that goes into just one drop of oil in some cases that they're naturally occurring substances, but they're artificially concentrated. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, part of my whole mission is to refocus on honoring the spirit of the plant and learning that less is more and not to take into the practice of the companies that are just trying to sell oil because they're trying to teach you to use more when you don't and it can be harmful and safety is a huge thing for me yeah and that's kind of just gotten lost along the way a little bit I feel yeah so I feel like that like it's like peppermint's a good example mm -hmm. like and people put on but like if you use it it's like gonna burn you Yes. So too much. Yes. And the whole thing with like ingestion, like I know that's a very controversial subject, but in no situation, unless you're working with a clinical aromatherapist, should you be eating essential oils. Like it's just, no. Yeah. Like it can, it can burn your esophagus and like all the, the very sensitive lining and your stomach and your, just all the things, like you said, it can just burn them. And I see people <laughs> being told to put peppermint in their water and I'm like, no. Mm-mm. Yeah, and I, and I think that's part of where your like intuition comes in. 
Like yeah. if somebody told me to put peppermint in the, my water, I'm like, uh, that doesn't, that doesn't feel right to me. And, and when you're working, when you're working with the plants and the plant spirit, you're, you're using your psych, psychic senses, your non-physical senses to like, listen, listen to them and, and, and they'll talk to you and guide you. But like on the other end, if somebody gives, somebody could give you, like you could, could create something that is really helpful to me based on what I tell you and what you're guided, but you could give it to me and I could get it and be like, something just doesn't feel right. And it has nothing to do with you or anything, but like, there's just something there where like, maybe I shouldn't, or, or maybe you just say, do it a certain way. And it's like, I don't know, that doesn't feel right. It's kind of like when I went to buy my first Turo deck and they were trying to talk me into somebody else, another deck. And I was like, no, this is another one. Just trusting your intuition and, and doing that, it doesn't negate everything that you had done to create what you created for me. It's just like, maybe it's not the right time and you just have to go back to it. And that's kind of like what you said with the lavender. Like there, I feel like there's like this push and pull with the lavender with me, like just kind of tiptoe back over to it and, and kind of, you know, explore it. I do that with my garlic allergy. Like, I'm like, okay, how can I, how much can I introduce and what's going to be the limit? And I just also use our intuition our non-psychic senses to help us along that way. Yeah, absolutely. Because that relationship with nature, we get so far removed from. Yeah. Yeah. And talking to, talking to your your plants and your, even your food, your food is plant medicine. Agreed. And you switched. Cause I know, cause we talked, you, you switched to a, a vegan diet. Yes. Through all this. Yeah. And I did her. actually. Yeah. In 2017. And that was a very, uh, slow journey to get there as mm-hmm. far as incrementally removing certain things, mm-hmm. but I just started to learn about what happens to the animals it's not and it's not so much for me animal rights it's more like what is going into my food what happened to that cow when it died and and now I'm eating the muscle and that that's all being you know it's just like we get so far removed from that too just like our even our food supply our food sources so for a while I was only eating organic because I felt like that was a little bit better but then it's just like I can't I feel like I can't trust anything at this point so meat just went out so did fish so I, I call it plant-based just yeah because I know vegan is a strong term and there's a lot more that goes into that but at this point it's just like the purity of it means a lot to me and how even the plants were treated to an extent too like I try and do organic as much as possible and yeah it's a whole thing <laughs> that was a big part of the journey too yeah, I, when when I was when I was studying with energy, um, first like really getting into it, um, I had came across something about the energy of the food, because it's not just about the the plant itself, but like how it's been taken care of and how it's been nurtured and how it's been harvested and how it how you know all that and they they even went in to talk about how um, like if you make your favorite dish and let's say you and your partner are making your favorite dish together and you get into a fight, how it's going to taste different and it's not going to taste the same. Mm -hmm. And, and then it was, that was like the ha moment was like, no wonder why no one can recreate grandma's sauce. (laughs) Because there is an extra yeah. ingredient of love and attention that went yeah. to it. It's not just about the items. It's about the the joy and all that stuff that actually went into it as well. Um, yeah. And that's everything that you eat. But it's energy too. So you can shift your energy and you can shift the energy of, of what you're eating. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that they, you know, they talked about was like, if you like, before you eat a meal, if you feel like it's not, you know, the energy is not aligned, or if you want to put your own intention to like, send your intention and energy to your food. And you can do that with everything. And I feel like that's kind of how you with the aromatherapy part, you like, work with it as well. 
Yeah, definitely. I made up a whole bunch of stuff yesterday in, in, ahead of the trip that we're taking. And I just like, I don't get to do it so often. So it was just like so much fun. And I just, there was so much love that just started to flow as I was making, you know, restocking our inventory for our sprays and stuff like that. It was just, and it smelled amazing in here. And I was just like, oh my God, I miss this so much. <laughs> yeah. So there's definitely an energy that goes into it. And I think it's part of the creativity mm -hmm. that comes through as well as just the honor of what I'm working with. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all part of the healing journey. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, it is. It's all part of the healing, healing journey. I think yes, I posted the podcast yesterday at night and I was kind of like what you were talking about in the early with being in the relationship. I talked about how I was in a relationship long and you know, people will say it's longer than it should be, but it's not because it's all part of your healing. There's still something you needed to get out of that in order to help you move forward. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you may or may not know exactly what that is, but it's important to your healing journey and every, everything like, you know, you moving back into your parents' house, there's probably some childhood healing or something that went into that or, you know, I can't put words in your mouth, but there was probably some type of healing that was happening, moving back in that house or even yeah. that feeling of support, extra support or whatever it is. Yeah, it was definitely that just being able, I mean, I was doing so much independently at that point. It was just nice to let somebody else help me for a little bit, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, absolutely. It was a humbling experience too. Yeah. Yeah, I could I could see that. Mm -hmm. Totally <laughs> see that. So let's fast forward to the last I don't know two years or so. I don't even know what year we're in. <laughs> so well, two, we, 2017, we, you had your big awakening. Um, what yeah, are, so that 2023 now. <laughs> 2017 was when the astrology part came in. Yeah. So I was on the whole intuitive development, studying aromatherapy, working towards my certification. And then like a load of bricks, 2017 came around. And that was, if everyone remembers who's listening, the quote unquote great American eclipse. Oh yeah. I remember. Oh yeah. <laughs> so apparently knowing that what I know now, I was being drawn to that one for a very specific reason. And I, I think for me, it's important to note too, that looking back on everything, the whole intuitive development part and all that practice had to come first, because I don't think I would have been aware of, or been able to see the signs that I was being shown in 2017 ahead of that eclipse, had I not gotten in tune before. Mm. So for several months before that eclipse happened, I was getting dragon symbology, like just dragons started coming into my awareness out of nowhere. I didn't even really give dragons any thought. So like, what, what is this? <laughs> so there was that. And I kept getting um, like the dark side of the moon album cover kept coming up and re on repeat for me, like for many months ahead of that eclipse. That eclipse was in August of 2017. So from like late spring early summer all of this started just like the synchronicity started coming like stronger than they ever had before so one of my friends and classmates in my intuitive development class tried to get astrology kind of in my awareness because she saw that in me and I was like I don't have time for this like I was just too focused on <laughs> you know the uh, intuitive development part and the aromatherapy studies even paying any attention so it just wasn't the right time but then spirit said, now's the time. And all of those, there were many more synchronicities. I also tell that story in a podcast episode. But then the eclipse happened and I was so drawn to this eclipse. I had to watch it. I had to like, it was, there was just like, like this excitement that I couldn't put my finger on. So I took the day off. We went to the beach. We watched it. We had like 90 something percent visibility here as far as the totality. So that experience was pretty cool. And then on the other side of it, 
I just, I felt really calm, but I also had just like things in my body were going on. Like I had, I guess I would relate them now to like solar plexus things. Like my digestion was off, my sleep was off. And then, and one of the other things that kept happening ahead of it was I would wake up with the Dave Matthews song, The Space Between, stuck in my head. So it was dragons, it was symbols, it was the space between, like that phrase in particular. So the two teachers from the Psychic Teachers podcast individually had interviews on this other podcast called Positive Head. So because of those interviews, I'd started listening to Positive Head at that time. And then my one friend had heard the episode before I had a chance to listen to it. And she had known what was going on. And she was like, you have to listen to this episode. So it was the host's interview with this astrologer. So I was like, oh, great. This has got to be good. <laughs> so I'm like, here we go. <laughs> so I listened to the episode and he was talking about the eclipses. And he spoke the phrase in the interview. I call the space between eclipses the dragon hole. <laughs> And I was like, okay, there it is. <laughs> All coming together. Yeah. So uh, I signed up for a reading with him. <laughs> and in September 2017 was the first time I'd ever looked at my birth chart, like with intent, intention. And that was my first ever astrology reading. And I ended up doing what he had called his eclipse journey. So I actually had four readings with him. Wow. So it was natal chart eclipses that gave me the tools that I needed to go back in time and kind of look at the last several years where everything started really happening and falling into place since 2015. And it was significant because I was having eclipses on natal planets, which is intense and important when that happens. And then in January, February, 2018, I started my astrology apprenticeship with that teacher. So I was into it. I was spiritually guided to my astrology teacher through all of it too. Yeah. And, and I could totally see how like getting into your psychic senses help because like you touched on the four major ones, all the visuals you were seeing, your clairvoyancy, because remember it, it's, it's not just in the head, but it's also seeing the signs, visual signs outside of us, the Claire audience hearing the songs whether they're on the radio or playing over and over in your head. Um, the the uh, feelings, because you were feeling the stuff within your body and then like knowing like, this is where I'm guided to go. This is what spirit's telling me and just like trusting that and and totally like getting into that and understand that just let you just be like really open to astrology when it- Yeah. I'm, yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And then it ended up happening for, for me to complete my aromatherapy certification. I had to do a research paper and I was stuck because I didn't know what to write about. So I ended up writing about astrological aromatherapy and I got my aromatherapy certification and my professional astrologer certification almost simultaneously. Wow. Wow. And that's how you link the two of them together. That's how I link the two of them together. <laughs> yep. And then Earth's Alchemy was born shortly after that in early 2019. And that would be the kind of like the culmination up to this point. Yeah. So for anybody that doesn't really under, when we talk about the astrology and the aromatherapy, you started creating blends for different phases of the moon, right? Mm hmm. Yeah, I started with full moons. Mm -hmm. So taking the so this woman, Patricia, Patricia Davis, pretty much has like one of the only astrological of aromatherapy books that are out there. And she has many other books that are more aromatherapy centric. But she and she was a massage therapist and an aromatherapist. And she started toying with astrology. And through her work with people, noticed that pulling in the essential oil that resonated with the person's sun sign was really important and powerful in her massage work. So in astrological aromatherapy, she covers many 
of the correspondences, like the plant to planet and that kind of thing. But she had developed the system, which she calls her signature oils. So she picked one oil that was the most potent in her work with somebody's sun sign. So I found that in reading that book, that that was, I agreed with it for one, just coming from both disciplines and started incorporating that as well. And that's how I started creating the lunar blends was picking the signature oil for the sun and the moon and blending them together to help with the, to help balance out the opposition energy that's present with a full moon. And I would usually pull in a third oil as well. I just look at the chart for the full moon and kind of intuit it and figure it out using the signature oil system that she developed. Yeah, that's really interesting and and helpful in going through whatever it is. Because the full moons, right? We were talking about full moons. The full moons has us looking at what within us, usually. Usually it's our emotional state, but it's always, there's always tension with a full moon one, because the moon is forever changing. And in that moment, it's when it's at, at its brightest. So having all of that light shed on us is super intense. It's reflected in our water and our bodies and all of the things too. Like you can, you can see it, you can see the effect that it has on us. The word lunacy comes from, you know, lunar. So just the uptick in, you know, crime and hospital visits and that kind of stuff that happens. That's a phenomenon that's proven time and time again with every full moon. And then there's just a natural opposition because it's at the moment when the sun and the moon are exactly opposite each other. So we always feel that tension and that energy as well. So it's important to know, I always work with it where it's happening in my own chart. So if you know your chart and you know where the full moon is happening, that it's pulling those two houses, signs that, you know, zodiac axis into play in your life. So that's a deeper way to work with it if you know where it's happening in your chart. And then if like the full moon's happening in a sign that you have natal planets, if it's happening in your sun sign, if it's happening in your moon sign, there's another layer that gets kind of pulled into. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the aromatherapy helps to like balance that out bring you yeah, a more ease as you go through what it what it's shining and bringing up on you yeah exactly because there's an energy to the oils too that correspond to wherever the full moon's happening which signs it's happening in and what i did was i would make them as what's called stock blends so it would just be like a five milliliter or a few milliliters because the full moon energy is really only like two days before the full moon the day of the full moon and a couple of days on the other side. So it was just enough to sort of use as a tool and working through whatever was coming up. And you can use stock blends in many different ways. It's just, that's just pure oil with the blend. So you can diffuse it. That was one of the ways that you could work with it. You could put it into water and make a spray out of it. You can make it into a lotion if it were, if it was oils that were okay for your skin. So there are many different ways. And I had suggestions on the inserts that I would include with them to work with the blend. Yeah. Yeah. All these helpful. So I think, yeah, I think they'll be coming back. It sounds like it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm wanting to get back more into my roots and, and the astrological aromatherapy practices. Yeah. It sounds, it sounds like it's like right there. Like even talking about it, you can see the excitement that it's bringing up and, and there, and, uh, and they're very, very helpful for, for people to go through that, you know, <clears throat> you opposites you know we all have that within us and so that just kind of heightens the moon heightens what's what's already within us for mm -hmm. us it. never brings up something that isn't within us and it might kind of sort of feel like you're not ready to face it but divine timing says yes it's time yeah and the moon relates a lot to our subconscious mm-hmm so it's important and that, you know, that shadow work element that falls into that category as well. So yeah, like you said, a lot of times it's not anything we might want to face, but it's going to come up because the moon's full. Yeah. <laughs> and we all deal with that collectively and personally. Yeah. And so the last, uh, the last year or so you've had a big shift and change as well. 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm almost two years out from quitting my corporate job. Two years already. Oh my gosh. August 13th. <laughs> yep. And that's wow. another piece. That's a podcast episode because it just happened to be the day that it was my last day was on Friday the 13th <laughs> in August, two years ago. <laughs> I love it. Can't make it up, right? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, so yeah, it's been definitely, I, I think probably the most intense part of the healing journey the last couple of years, because being able to get myself to that point and cut that cord took a lot of work, a lot of inner work, a lot of self-awareness, a lot of divine timing, a lot of trust, all the things that I've shared so far, trust and spirit and the universe. And it's really hard. I have a lot of, I guess you could say what's fixed energy in my chart. So change is very difficult for people with a lot of fixed energy. And that was a huge change and it still is in every aspect of my life. But thankfully, I've had wonderful support from friends like you and family and my spouse, fortunately, along the way. And that's made that part of the journey better. But it's still, there's still a lot of parts to it that I know are still things that I need to work through. But I'm happy to because doing the work is now just part of it. So, yeah, <clears throat> um, having that happen and then kind of work rolling Ursa Alchemy under my business now, which is Sea Goddess Healing Arts. I co-own that with my business partner and, and very dear friend, Nandy. So the consolidation that kind of had to happen because doing it all, like two businesses, full-time job, like everything, I had to shed so much to be able to just really focus on everything the whole journey has brought me to at this point. So it's a lot to work through leaving a stable job that you've been at for 11 and a half years <laughs> and uh, just having the courage to even do that, to put in the resignation letter, to take the leap, all the things. And, and I, and I guess that there's still some questioning that might come up during this. Oh yeah. 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 When things are a little bit slower, you know, the financial part creeps back in a little bit sometimes. Like I know you've talked about that too, even recently. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, just, I just honor whatever comes up and work through it. And I just, I'm not going back to that world. I just won't do it. So forging ahead and just being consistent and stable and, and building what we're building with this business is just my dream, my goal, my my work, what, what I'm supposed to be doing. I mean, it, it, everything that's been laid out before me along the way that's shown me that I have to honor that too. And then with the podcast, I have Chiron in the first house of my chart. So that's why it's called Becoming Chiron. Whenever we have a planet in our first house, it's part of the energy of that is to embody the energy. Mm -hmm. So that's why I said I mean, my whole life has been a healing journey because I have the planet related to healing in the space that is all about me. Yeah. <laughs> so that whole project is something that I never saw coming and probably never even would have thought to do five years ago because I would have been too afraid to talk. Yeah. So finding my voice along the way has been part of it too. Yeah, I can relate to that. I like it. Our charts, uh, our charts are like mirrors, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah which is really interesting. Um, it's it, astrology has been like so helpful to my my journey, um, and like I've learned so much listening to you, and like getting readings from you. It just kind of um, getting me to like explore so many many different things um and and I feel like every time I learn something else and every time I look at my chart like I intuitively get some more information as well mm -hmm. yeah I in my healings I like to get people's charts and pull them up because I just I can look at it and like go oh wow like it just it's like opens up a book inside of my spiritual brain I don't know what to call it yeah it's like oh, well, this makes sense because this and this, and then like, okay, we'll go with it. We're just going to go with it. And that's how it is. But I think it's so important for people to connect, to get their natal chart looked at, because it really will help, 
help you. And even if you look at it the first time and you're like, I don't know, this doesn't make any sense, you're still going to get something out of it. You don't may, may not know right in that moment, but you're still going to get something out of it that's going to help you along the way. Because I like astrology and I think I, I was listening to you and you're like, I'm an engineer and I'm like, no wonder why she went into astrology because there's like that whole part of it. Because to me, it kind of, for somebody that has a lot like a logical mind and need that like logical part of it, astrology helps in that area. And it actually helps me even tap more into my spiritual side. Because now I'm like, oh, I tap into this and that like it, it gives me confirmation. That's I guess more confirmation. So I listen to you, they kind of dive into it and like, yeah, no wonder I should sure it's the, being an yeah, it's a, it's an ancient science. Like and, I am a scientist at heart. I mean, that's just yeah. part of my being. Yeah. So I went from making earth maps to cosmic maps. It's not <laughs> it wasn't that big of a shift when I really think about it. Yeah, it's amazing, like that whole part of it. And, uh, and the creative side of it, like there's still, when you are, have that logic, there's still a lot of creativity in everybody and how it looks different, different to everybody. Like I was not somebody that would write poetry when I was a kid, but I would like build things and do things like that or draw and things like that. And you like, oh, I wrote poetry as I. I would have never thought about writing poetry as a kid. That's awesome. And it's just another expression of your creativity to help get things out there. And now I write and my mom says, sometimes I don't, I have to like look and say, yeah, this is coming out of my child's mouth. <laughs> because yeah, I, I write so, you know, I've written so much more. Although the last couple of weeks, it's been kind of quiet. And that's okay. Yeah. I think once we hit cancer season, it was like that big shift from Gemini. I wanted to like throw, and then we hit cancer. I was like, time to feel. <laughs> <laughs> no more time to think. We're, at, we're from air to water now. <laughs> I was like, oh man. And oh. when you, you like, and it's, and I love it because like, you know, before it's like, oh, why is this happening? And I'm like, well, now I know because like I sh we shifted signs and the energy shift and like this. I'm like, okay, and this is this is my season. This is what I'm in now because the like the astrologies are our season. They're all based on different elements and stuff. Exactly, and it's helped me to learn more about reading tarot too. Oh yeah, there's that law, law of correspondences that I referred to earlier. It's that's just present in everything, and yeah. there ain't like aromatherapy is an ancient science too. Oh yeah, it absolutely. goes back millennia, millennia. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, and pulling in everything. When I was reading this book with with the Native Americans, like the, what they they use and stuff, um, when they the plant they used to treat fevers is what it like the scientists took and made into acetaminophen and it's like they just you know but that's we have a plant that that can help us through these things yeah and there's probably some correspondence to either the planet mars or the sign of aries because aries rules the head yeah yeah <laughs> it's all there for us. We just have to be present and look. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love it. It's just another, another healing modality that's there to help us. So what are some of your final, final thoughts or you, the tools that you use the most to help you along in your healing journey? Obviously astrology and aromatherapy. What, what other like tools help you along? I think one of the biggest things right now is my dreams because they've always been a modality where I would get messages and just the relationship that I've developed with my spiritual team. I call them my team spirit. Uh, that relationship that I put a lot of time and effort into in my intuitive development journey, I am in touch with them all the time. And whenever I am 
and I use it, I use my intuition and my work and my readings. Like it's all, it's like, oh, it's a complete package at this point. And whenever I'm feeling, working through something difficult in this part of the journey, I always reach out to them and ask for a sign or just ask for help or guidance or a dream or something. And I work with the planets in this way too. So that development of that relationship and tapping into that always is really important, especially right now. So I know you're not a big into journaling. It depends. Mm -hmm. I did when the, when the moment strikes, like I have, I'm very good at documenting. Uh Uh-huh. So when I feel like I need to record something, like something that happened recently or the synchronicities in, you know, the way that the ending the job, corporate job part happened, that I will do. I haven't yet gotten to that space of intuitive journaling. My, my question was, when you get your dreams, like how do you like go get to understand your dreams or like when you dream, like, what is that next step? Because when I work I, with people, I, are like, I hear like people like, oh, I dream. I know I dream, but I don't know what it is. And one of the tools I use is journaling because that has helped me a lot. So I do keep a dream journal. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and that's usually like, it's, it sits on my nightstand. It's the same one that I've had for many years. And as soon as I think I need to re- recall something or even in that space where you're still kind of half asleep, the journal comes out. So that is a part where you do use your journal. <laughs> oh yeah. I think that's really important. So maybe I do do intuitive journaling, just not the way I think it should look. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just helped you to understand another part of you. Yay. Yes, you did. As you do. <laughs> yes. Dream journaling for sure. Yeah. I like to go. Do you go back into your dreams? As far as the documentation or if I'm still halfway there as far as being conscious. So like when I'm in, if I'm in a dream and I'm dreaming and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, I missed something. I'll be like, hit the read button and like go back. Yeah. And yeah, figure out what did I miss? Sometimes it's mm-hmm. like, I keep going on that same loop. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I love doing dream work. Me too. We should, we should talk about that in more depth at another date. I'm definitely open to that for sure. Yeah. That's important. Yeah. I think that would be very helpful to kind of talk about a little bit more on another episode, go into our dream work and how we, we both kind of like work with it and do it. Cause that would be very interesting to get two different point of views. Yeah. Through the, through the process. Yeah. And there was a whole year where I journaled with the moon. That was something else my astrology teacher recommended. So like tapping into how your where the moon is based on where it's going over your chart mm-hmm. and what your dreams are like during that time. So the moon relates very much to our dreams as well. So that whole thing was very eye opening, And I would love to tap back into that year of, I have it on the shelf behind me, <laughs> that journal, because that was an intention that I set before I I started feeling like I could start teaching about the moon and everything. So yeah, that's a good resource that I could definitely pull into that discussion as well. Yeah. We'll have to set a date and do another one because now I'm like really intrigued and want to learn more about that. And uh, because definitely I notice in certain, certain moon phases or certain like full moons or new moons, like my dreams are either really intense or um, where like I, I wake up and I'm like really restless, which I know that to me is I know I've done a lot in my, my sleep state. And then, then I have to kind of go into meditation to figure out well, like, okay, what the heck just happened <laughs> kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So I would definitely like to like talk about that. Cause I think that's really, really helpful. And, and yeah give people different perspectives of it too, how to work yeah. with. And we've done work together on the astral. Fairly recently, I remember sending you a text like, hey, you're in my dream and this is what we did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And we're, we're supposed to set up a time and date to do that intentionally. Yes. <laughs> at some point too. 
which is which is so much fun. I did that with yep. somebody. I've done that with a few people. It's really, it's really a lot of fun mm -hmm. to do. And we can talk. Maybe we'll do that, and then also talk about that in our episode. That would be okay. fun. that would be fun. That's that's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so bringing you more episodes later on to talk about. So I got a brand new deck this weekend, and I thought I would. I mentioned to you that we I'd pull a card and you're like, well, I have my deck here. So we're we're both gonna pull a card or and kind of conclude this podcast. I don't always use I don't always pull cards at the end of my podcast, but I felt like today really. So this deck is the whispers of love. It's got some beautiful artwork too. I'm always drawn to cards with artwork, but I didn't pick this out now. Somebody else picked it out for me. Mm. I got the blur if that... you put it close I can see it oh wow yeah let me see that's gorgeous let me see if I remember how to do what I did to put this on to take it off there we go oh relationship patterns yeah that's a good one for the Venus retrograde that we're on the brink of oh yeah that's Monday right is it Saturday. Monday? Saturday. It takes strength to recognize the need for change. It's really pretty. It's got um the there's a like woman playing a harp. And then I thought it was like a mirror, but in it is like a little cherub, you know, the little babies with the wings. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, cherubs, cupids. Cupids, yeah. Kind of, it reminds me of like going to church because they had them like around um, in some of like the artwork. And then it's like, it's mother, like to me, this is like very Mother Earth. Like she just came up to like comfort yeah. and, and show um, relationship patterns. And it's, we I've had this discussion recently about a heart because it came up in one of my group classes I was teaching the heart and I asked what the meaning of the heart meant to to them and, and they're like the heart always sounds like it always has this beautiful sound like it never like a guitar where it could go it's like you you don't play it like a note out of tune it just all seems and somebody goes it's very angelic and peaceful and I'm yeah. like, that is so true. And in, in the relationships, like when we're in relationships and there's patterns that come up and you can, you can really fight those or you can adapt and change. And so what is really going to bring you that more peace? And it's not about losing part of you. It's just about growing. And, th and that's the big thing with partners whether they're friendships or relationships, it's you're, you're here to help each other, like grow and evolve and, and change. And, and you can work with each other to do that. And I think like one of the reasons why I think I stayed in that relationship so long, just kind of like, it's all like reflective of how you started is because I believed in that, like we could work together and make that happen but that's not what happened it was just like going this way instead but like mm -hmm. you know, that's that's what you want somebody that's going to be like supporter and help and work and it's not you're not always going to have great days and you know you'll have those I heard somebody the other day they were talking partnership is not a 50 50 and it's like they check in with each other and it's like I got 60% today and they're like, I got 40 or, you know, you might have days where you're like, both go, I have 20, I have 20. So how can we like lift and support each other to get through that? And, you know, sometimes one picks up and I was like, that's, that's beautiful because that's really what it is. Like you can't all be the same energy because we're not all the same energy every day. That's beautiful. Yeah. And a really important way to look at it, especially right now, because that is part of what the Venus retrogrades teach us. And this one in particular, 
I want to emphasize as well, it's not always relationship with a partner. It's also the relationship with yourself. Yeah. That's first and foremost. Yeah. So in this one in particular, it's funny, we talked about this today because the one of the, the kind of hints to themes or how to work with the energy that we're going to be in is think back to eight years ago. And for me, that was 2015. Wow. <laughs> yeah. You blow my mind every time you do something like that. <laughs> 2015 is the is the year I turned 40, but it's also the year my ex-wife left me. Right in, coming in like September of 2015. Yep. So <laughs> whenever we have the planetary retrograde, it's like reading a card in reverse. It's internalized review honor what's coming back up or anything that's left from that time period for healing, for growth, for reflection, for reminders, as far as why you're not in that relationship anymore. And like I said, in the beginning, this is definitely one where we're going to be really dropping into our heart space. So if you also know where Leo is in your chart, that can also give some clues as far as more themes and yeah. And house. Mm-hmm for me it's four and that was the whole all the significance that came around with that eclipse because that's where my north node is and that soul's growth and for me in particular fourth house space is authentic self yeah so pay attention everyone listening <laughs> anything that's even been surfacing since early june that's when venus shifted into leo so the themes have already probably started revealing themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Yeah. Definitely see that. So, so that was a beautiful Venusian divine card bound. The one that I pulled <laughs> from Rebecca Campbell's Work Your Light, Trust Your Path. <laughs> it's uncanny. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? Mm hmm and then she in in this deck, actually, I think all of her decks, she has a soul inquiry inquiry question that goes along with the card. And that is the question. If you knew you would be supported no matter what, what would you do? So I feel like that sums up my story very well <laughs> and could be something for other people to reflect on. It's interesting because one of the themes for me in my old relationship is I didn't feel supported. Mm, me neither. And then yeah, that that's when you were talking, I was like, man, I didn't realize how similar our stories were. Yeah. <laughs> and think? in that relationship, when you were talking about percentages, it was mostly him zero, me a hundred. And yeah, it's just that just wasn't working for me anymore. <laughs> yeah, you get more negative. You get burned out too. Yeah, yeah, and it shows up physically, emotionally, in so many different ways. Yeah, for me, it's like I shut down parts of me because I just couldn't show up for all all that. Yeah, and then. And that happens and kind of feel like you kind of feel like you lose yourself because you've shut down to be able to show up. Yeah. And a lot of it was just being in survival mode for me. Yeah. Because it was all up to me for <clears throat> shelter, for food, for like everything. And yeah. it was just, it was just too much. Yeah. But beautiful, beautiful cards beautiful energy going into this if um, you haven't checked out ursula's podcast it's becoming Prion, right I I don't, I don't, I, and uh you can listen to it on spotify all anywhere where you can listen to your podcast and uh be sure to go and check out her website i'll put her information in there because you need to get your data chart read. 
you haven't <laughs> done so, you need to. And if you had done so and you're coming up to your birthday, definitely jump in and get your solo return because, man, I think this is my third year I've gotten a solo return with you. And it just like kind of lays out the year. And then I reflect back on what I learned last year and look at it and go, man, it was like so on point, like this and that. And like everything just makes sense. And it just kind of gives you like a little guide to how to navigate this year that you have coming up. Yeah. The vibe of the whole personal year ahead is definitely, and there's a lot that goes into a solo return reading too. Mm -hmm. And just to, for anyone listening, date, time, and location are essential for the, like accurate birth information is essential for a solo return reading, but not necessarily for a natal chart. Yeah. I can do it. I can do it without time. Yeah. But definitely recommend start with your natal chart and move on from there because there's so many different other things that you can get read in your chart. Absolutely. And uh, look forward to exploring even more coming up. Me too, Val. I don't know. I just a quick question. Do you do you do chart readings based on specific things? Because I've seen like some people like talk about looking at your chart for love. Do you do it like focused on like business and things like that? What are the different readings that you give besides the natal chart and the, the soul chart? Reading? So, so return reading. I don't know why I said soul return. chart, but I just said soul <laughs> chart. Your birth chart kind of is your soul chart, right? Yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> So I usually approach every reading with my intuition Mm -hmm. and I will focus on what I'm feeling called to focus on for that person in that moment. Every natal chart reading that I do also includes transits. So I just kind of, if, if we're doing a one hour, I just, I summarize it and feel focus on where I feel called to focus. Um, If somebody wants to talk about a specific topic, then that that will be, that'll draw my attention to the specific house that those things relate to. So I definitely can pull that in as well. I have one question email reading. So that's even something that could be fun. If you just want to focus on one question that's up on my page as well. I do um, 60 minute and also 120 minutes. So that's actually two readings. The first reading is solely focused on the natal chart and the second reading is solely focused on transits. Those are my favorite because one hour, there's a lot to pull. There's a lot to put into one hour with somebody Mm -hmm. with the two readings. I can go really in depth on just natal chart energies and then really in depth on just transit. So that's two, two 60 minute readings, which I like to go deep with people. That's where I feel like I get called to work the most Mm because I just like to go deep. So there's that option there as well. I also have the astrological aromatherapy. So that would be creating a blend based on someone's birth chart that's up on my page as well I I added a moon reading recently so we can look at like your moon's your birth phase matters I don't know if a lot of people know that so that energy translates in a different way for everybody depending on what phase of the moon they were born under so there's that there as well and then I'm open to doing things like astrocartography and relationship readings and you know charts for infants and that kind of thing like that's at areas where I love to go to as well. I just, that'll be like, it's just a custom request. So if it's not there, reach out to me. I have a custom request on there as well. Yeah. Yeah. Very interesting. And yeah, I I do recommend that too, because if you have children learning their chart will definitely help. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Help. We're about to expand on that portion a little, in a little bit. Yeah. Maybe in the fall. That's exciting. Family coaching. Yeah, family coaching with astrology. <laughs> I, I think that's going to be such a, so important to people. Really is. Because yeah. you you can learn how to communicate with all different family members. When I was te- teaching, just finished teaching in a class with Divine Feminine Masculine, and somebody, I was like, what have you learned? And they're like, learning the Divine Feminine and Masculine helps me to communicate better with other people. And I was like, yeah, that's so true. When you can recognize how somebody else is showing up and how you're showing up and like the divine feminine or divine masculine energy, it does help you to communicate. And I think that's like learning your, the charts also help learning how they learn, learning how they love, learning how they communicate and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And, And what lessons you've come in together to teach each other. 
Yes. So those dynamics usually show up in families. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's so much you can learn. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much for coming on. And I could sit in here, like we started, like I could talk here for hours. <laughs> we could have like a three hour episode and, and it would be like, we'd still be talking about amazing things. So yes. uh, you'll come back again and uh, we'll do something about our dreams and astro. And thank you so much for your time today. I appreciate all your insight and your wisdom. And I'll add Ursula's all her information in the show notes so that you all can uh, check her out on Instagram and YouTube and her podcast and everything. Thank you. Val. You're welcome. And uh, until next time, go out and spread some love in this world. And I'm sending all my love to all of you. Bye-bye for now.